I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Romans, chapter 13, so let's focus on verses 10 through 14. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Besides this, knowing the time, it is already the hour for you to wake up from sleep. For now your salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Night is nearly over, and the daylight is near. So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk with decency, as in the daylight, and not carousing in drunkenness, not in sexual impurity and promiscuity, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on Messiah Jesus and make no plans to satisfy the fleshly desires. Romans chapter 13, verses 10 through 14. You know, today's passage begins with a pretty bold statement about love and the Torah's requirements, that is the Old Testament. And it echoes Jesus' message when he was asked about the greatest commandment. And we find that story in Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40. Let's read it now. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and the first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40, once again. You know, remember when the Beatles sang, All You Need Is Love? Well, many naive Christians try to weave Jesus and Paul's statements together with those with John Lennon and Paul McCartney. (laughs) They say, all we need is to love people and don't get hung up on obeying the Bible. Well, while the Beatles and Jesus seem to be saying the same thing, their statements are very different. You know, we use the word love a lot in our culture, don't we? We say that we love our mothers. We also love apple pie. Uh, Some people say they love the person that they're dating, so they're going to disregard the Bible's instructions concerning purity. They say love uh, overrides stuff like that. But other people remain abstinent because they feel uh, that the Lord's requirements are pure and true and even more than their feelings toward the person that they're dating. So the real question is, what kind of love fulfills the Torah? What kind of love fulfills the commands of the Lord? Paul, not McCartney, (laughs) goes on to define true love as being self-denying and others serving. It displays of a selfish love or not catalyst for salvation. Instead, they should be our response to having already received salvation by God's grace through our faith in Jesus. So our sincere devotion to Him does not fulfill the Torah. Instead, because of His overwhelming love for us, we, while yet sinners, uh, He has satisfied the law's requirements on our behalf. Remember John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Well, when believers accept the challenge of loving others as Jesus loved us, well, then we are fulfilling the Torah in essence. That is, we're not fulfilling the Torah in order to earn our salvation. We are fulfilling the Torah uh, because Jesus has earned our salvation. You understand the difference. Obeying God's word is not a means of salvation. Rather, out of appreciation for our salvation, we should be willing to obey him and trust that his word is true. Why? Because it is. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.